Commando's strike, Commando strike force was a piece of unfinished business. We just had to get it done. I think that in a way we reinvented Second World War games. We made them fashionable again almost 10 years ago, when that seemed unthinkable. And people thought we were making a game which went against the trends in the market. But what we did was to open up an avenue which plenty of others have since followed. What we've tried to do is to steer a middle course between traditional Second World War games and first-person shooters with what Commandos was, and we've tried to create a more tactical experience, a game which involves more thinking, more depth, with missions which have some purpose, and with defined characters with different personalities. <laughs> Commando's Strike Force has involved more than two and a half years of work, with 70 of us working on production throughout that period, plus all the people working on localization, testing, marketing, etc., etc. So that makes it one of the most, if not the most, ambitious of Pyro Studios' projects to date. We have three characters, the Green Beret, the Sniper and the Spy each with his own clearly defined personality. The Green Beret is all about action, the sniper stealth and the spy infiltration. We use the distinct personalities of each of the commandos to create missions and to create the gameplay. The player will be able to choose how to tackle each of the missions and then how to deal with each of the objectives. In fact, there are some missions, for example, where we have two characters and the player can choose which of them to play, using the skills of each one to complete the objectives. The creative process for Strike Force broke down into three main stages. The first, as always, is a brainstorming session, where we get the whole team together and put forward all kinds of interesting ideas that we want to include in the project. And then this whole bunch of ideas is put into what we call a design document, where we put all the proposals into a structure and create a kind of guide for the rest of the project. Not only the design, but also the programming and graphics. And finally, once this creative process is finished, we move on to what we call the implementation process. During the implementation process, in the design department, we use the world editor. The world editor lets us position all the actors that will be involved in the game. Enemies, vehicles, sets, the commanders themselves, supporting allies. The biggest challenge in developing Commando Strike Force, and without doubt one of the most fun aspects, is the fact that it's a multi-platform game. For example, the memory limitations of consoles mean we really had to turn somersaults in terms of programming and sometimes even resort to a bit of trickery to fit in everything we wanted to include on the three platforms. It was a major large-scale project and we ended up writing around half a million lines of code. Another of the challenges on Commander Strike Force was to develop a multiplayer mode. The multiplayer games are based on the same maps as the campaign missions, but adapted to the topology involved in multiplayer gameplay, adding new elements to allow the players to find cover. Another major challenge was the implementation of streaming. Streaming is a technique used to allow you to display much bigger missions than those which you used to be able to. What you do, depending on how the user is playing, is to keep preparing the terrain they will be playing on in the future. That way, users don't notice any waiting or loading time as they work through their mission. Our game uses more complex streaming because users are free to go where they like, and the streaming has to be able to predict where the user is going to go so as to prepare that situation. The artificial intelligence of the enemies in Commander Strike Force is, in a way, similar to what would have been the AI in the previous editions of Commandos, 
But the user's perception of the game is different. This is a first-person game. That means that the user's perception of how the enemies move also changes. We have infiltration situations where you have to use stealth. You have to hide from your enemies, try to make sure they don't discover you, eliminate them in silence. We have combat situations, full-on combat, where the enemies have to behave very differently. For example, if you're taking on an enemy in battle, it makes no sense for them to act in the same way as when you're trying to shoot them from behind. There were 33 of us involved in the artwork for Commando Strike Force, divided among various departments. In the initial phase of the project, there were 15 artists, and the number increased in line with the needs of the project. The fact is that a graphic for PC is not the same as one for PlayStation 2 or Xbox. This involves a series of processes and tasks which we couldn't cover with just 15 artists, or even 20, which is what we'd originally planned. In creating the setting for the missions, we wanted to make the situations seem real, beyond the visual aspect itself, give them a little more depth. We did this through the character animations and the interactions between them, which you encounter as you go along, with different enemies and allies acting out situations which have nothing to do with you, and which can take place without your involvement. Commando Strike Force covers three very different locations. Stalingrad is a city completely devastated by the war. In France, we go off and explore a French village where the German presence can be felt around every corner. And Norway, which is perhaps the counterpoint to the other two settings, has a map with really extreme conditions, making it visually very attractive. We used the Bratislava Symphony Orchestra to record the soundtrack for Commando Strike Force, mainly to push the envelope. We wanted to give it an epic feel, a much more cinematographic feel. So right from the start we thought it would be a nice idea to record it with a symphony orchestra. The type of music we have in Commando Strike Force is a dynamic music, depending on the action, on what's happening and how the player is progressing through the game. The music interacts with the player's actions. Our job in testing Commando's Strike Force for the three platforms, PC, PlayStation 2 and Xbox, basically involved trying out the game, the missions, both normal player behavior and less plausible things, climbing up to the top of all the parts of each set, heaps of rubble, etc., looking for any anomalous behavior. We were backed up by two outside teams, one in England in London and another in the States in San Francisco. We coordinated things using an error database and as they entered errors into it, we would pass them on to the relevant production department. There they were dealt with and once they'd been resolved, we sent them back for them to try out in the new version. The challenges lying ahead of the next two or three years are to make Piero Studios into a company with more than 250 people producing video games, and not just one of the top names in Europe, but one of the top studios worldwide. We're working on PlayStation 3, on Xbox 360, we're working on PC of course, we're planning on doing some stuff on laptops, we're putting new teams together. I think people will be hearing a lot about Pedo Studios over the next few years, or at least that's what we're aiming for.